Hi everyone, welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. I am Jason Morgan, the host of the video series that puts you in contact with the top minds in the trucking industry. Today I have Sherry Calkins, Geotab's Vice President of Strategic Partners. Hi Sherry, how are you doing? Hi, great, how are you? Good, thanks for joining us. So how are you doing with the work from home thing? Is this regular for you? Is this a learning curve? How are you doing over there? Yeah, well luckily for me, I guess it, it's it's regular for me. However, what I think is more interesting at this time is, is adapting with others who aren't used to this. So we're plugging along really well, and uh, this may be the new norm for quite a while. So business is still going strong. I'm full schedule of conference calls every day, so that's good. Good, yes, and I appreciate you putting up uh, with me and patience as I struggle with my own technology issues. So that, that no one is immune. No one is immune. We're all dealing with it. Yep. So today we're talking about um, integrations within data, right? Geotab, I know, does a lot of this. Um, and so just to get us started, let's go back uh, to January when things were still normal for the most part. And uh, I know you made an announcement uh, with an integration partnership with GM, uh, really one of the, the first of its kind uh, at such a deep level in that space. Can you kind of give us an update of where that integration is at today and, and how that partnership is proceeding along? Absolutely. You know, we had a lot of enthusiasm about this new partnership that we have with General Motors. And in general, all of our OEM partnerships, this is the new norm that we are seeing. A lot of embedded solutions coming out of the factory. So as we continue to work with partners, bringing more into our platform, really exciting times. Um, but as far as General Motors, you know, we continue to enhance the integration relationship with GM. We continue to bring in new data sets as well. Um, so we have an aggressive roadmap to continue to enhance this data and add additional add-ins and reports related to the GM data specifically. Um, in addition, one thing we're working on and we continue to work with our marketplace partners is offering different camera solutions and different types of integrations. And we have an exciting uh, new feature that's going to be coming out in May, June timeframe uh, from General Motors for in-cab coaching, which is really important on the safety front, as you can imagine. Oh, cool. Yeah, for sure. Um... And video is really just kind of a growing, uh, growing field and, and fleets uh, as well. Even in the past year, we've seen on our side, on the content side, just explosive uh, engagement and growth anytime we post anything video related uh, with telematics. Absolutely. It's a great tool. Uh, it's a, a, a different and unique way to really coach your drivers and to really know what's happening inside the cab and even outside the cab. Sometimes it's a matter of just protecting the liability of the company. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And any feedback that uh, even remotely or even just coaching that uh, that fleets can do, I know that's a big, big benefit. And it's really kind of a growing segment too, re relatively new. Um, taking a step back a little bit, because and, and even for me, I think when we talk about these data integrations, they sound like magic, like it just happens. It's kind of nice, it's fun. But that's, I, know, I also understand that's not the reality, right? Integrations take work on both sides. Uh, you're right in the thick of it there. So kind of shifting gears into the, the heavy duty space, what's the temperature out there in terms of integrations between OEM suppliers, data service providers like yourself? How is that, how is that world evolving and, and how are you helping your clients navigate it? Yeah, we have really good news there. Luckily, um, you know, it's actually really good and we really have strong participation from the heavy, heavy truck manufacturers in particular. I think in part because it is a business to business sell. There is no consumer aspect to it. So they're really focused on how do we improve your operations? How do we improve the safety um, you know, of your drivers behind the wheel and others on the road? And, and more importantly, how we get you the data you need to integrate with other platforms that they may use for payroll, routing systems, compliance, et cetera. So in the heavy truck space, you know, we're seeing a lot of integrations that are coming to market. Um, and really, you know, the reluctance is just at the ability of the OEM. Some aren't provided uh, or aren't providing APIs today or they don't have the ability to do it. I know they're all working towards that, but scalability is an issue with some of the manufacturers today. Um, but, you know, I, I think as, as we see time tick on, you know, year over year, we'll have more manufacturers coming out with these embedded solutions. On the fleet, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say the good news is we're, we're pretty much talking with all of them, especially in the heavy truck space. There is uh, a lot of enthusiasm on their side as well. They're hearing it from their customers, um, you know, pushing that back, saying we want you to integrate with Geotab so we have one platform or, or whoever their TSP may be. Um, so we are actually to the point now where we're having uh, manufacturers reach out to us, which is really interesting. It's been us knocking on their doors for many years. And we're starting to see the flip of that happening now. 
Uh, one of the aspects you mentioned that I thought was interesting was integrating other internal fleet departments into that data flow. Is that uh, like in your kind of general view, what, what level of fleet is doing that? Or is that kind of across the board interest or is it someone that's more, more familiar with how the data works? You know, typically we find it's more of your larger fleets, uh, enterprise type fleets, fleets that typically have around, you know, three or 400 vehicles that they have to manage and above. Mm -hmm. um, and we're seeing integration from all things, uh, payroll system, SAP systems, Oracle, um, pretty much, you know, the gamut of it all, especially safety and compliance too is a big one. Um, even internal systems, a lot of fleets today, I'm surprised to learn how many still have their own homegrown solutions, whether that be their fleet management system, their maintenance system, something along those lines. And they want to be able to integrate with their own internal systems too. Right. I think I've talked with uh, some of your other Geotab colleagues along that line too about how that's just one of the biggest challenges is that internal systems haven't as evolved maybe as quickly as the solutions that you all are providing. So getting that data to match up is tricky. Yeah, we try to stay ahead of the game. Um, we have a marketplace with hundreds of solutions, add-ins and add-ons, a lot of integrations in there as well. Um, so what we do is look at it's the biggest partners in the industry, and then certainly we listen to our partners. We listen to what they want, who they work with, and then do our best to try to integrate those partners and have it be turnkey. So you can go into our marketplace, and if you're looking for you know, an integration with your payroll system, hopefully chances are that we've got that integration already in place. Sure, very cool. Uh, in addition to the marketplace, are there any uh, just general tips maybe for fleets that uh, are looking at integrating uh, different data sets? Is there a format their data should be in? What can help, what can they do on their end to help you do your job with, with other partners? Yeah, I mean, certainly um, APIs, you know, if they don't have that API interface, it's very difficult to be able to integrate. That's the number one thing. Uh, secondly, security, you know, we've had to say no to a few integrations just because it lacks the security. Um, so those are the two things that I think are most important. And I think if, you know, businesses are looking at those two things and have confidence, we certainly will do our vetting on the security side. We'll let them let the partner know where they may be lacking and what they need to, to move up to that more secure level that we feel comfortable to integrate with them and that they meet our standards. Uh, but those would be the, the top two that I would recommend. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And I know security it can be hard because uh, at least even for me as a journalist, no one really wants to talk to me about it because then uh, they don't want me to printing anything, which I which I appreciate. But also just the the common uh, the way you speak about it, the certifications. I mean, I know I've talked with you also. Having a helping hand to understand that is it would be huge. Yeah, we all at Geotap have had to become. I wouldn't classify experts, but pretty darn close to it around security because it is so important in everything that we do. Right, for sure. Um, one of the other bullet points, I know maybe this is just my own bias because I've been, I've been working on a story uh, for it, but I know fleets have um, uh, an interest in it. And I think you touched on it a little bit here, just the safety aspect. Um, such a big component of, of fleet operations. Uh, in terms of like using that data or even to your point, training drivers, what are some of those data points or sets that people should look at and, and how can you make it um, uh, valuable or, or important for people who might not be used to talking about it with those kind of metrics? Yeah, I mean, typically when we work with our partners, um, safety is the most commonly used form of why they want telematics and one of the key reasons why they implement this type of technology. Um, and there are a lot of components to safety and you can capture that from telematics, uh, from camera systems and different ways of doing that, but probably the most important to be able to coach the driver in real time. Um, it's one thing to get reports after the fact, meet with your driver on a weekly basis, and then go down the list of areas that, you know, they, they weren't um, following their procedures and their policies. Uh, but having that real-time coaching, that's where we have seen the, the increase in safer driving and the reduction of crashes. Um, when a driver's speeding, for instance, um, you, know, you want that driver to be alerted and coached in real time that they're speeding over the speed limit. I think we're all guilty of sometimes you're just going down the highway, going through the motions. You might not be realizing if you're not on cruise control how fast you are going. So being able to have those alerts in cab that notify that driver immediately when something like that happens, I think it's probably um, you know, one of the biggest coaching tools that, that I see from a lot of fleets of what they want to use it for. Um, also things like reckless driving, um, you know, different maneuvers with the vehicles, harsh cornering, harsh braking, harsh acceleration, those are all indicative of you know, potential crash 
crashes and especially speeding. I mentioned earlier, speeding is probably the number one reason as to why uh, a lot of fleets want to have this in-cab in driver coaching to reduce those crashes and, and especially the severity of crashes with speeding. Um, you know, oftentimes if fleets are using more of a report-based solution for safety versus the real-time in-cab coaching, you don't always have the contacts as to what happened. I think we've all experienced driving down the road, you're driving safely, you're going the speed limit, and all of a sudden there's something, some debris in the highway and you have to do a quick maneuver to get around it, safely of course. Um, but that, you know, could notify as a, a, a risky driving maneuver. Uh, by the driver, and if they have that real-time coaching in the cab, that driver knows exactly why that notification went off. So when they go back to the office at the end of the day, they can let their supervisor know, I'm probably going to be on the report for reckless driving, and here's why and what happened. So I think that real, real, real-time real, in-cab coaching is critically important. Okay. So real-time, are you, is that referencing Geotab Talk? Yeah, we, we actually have two different areas that the talk is probably the best because it really lets the driver know what exactly they did wrong. So it's text to speech. Um, you can create any customized rule that you would want and virtually any uh, text that you would want to be spoken to the driver. So if the driver is speeding, you can set up a rule that if they go five miles over the posted speed limit, that the go talk can then verbally tell the driver you're driving 15 miles over the posted speed limit, please slow down. We also have a secondary type of notification where it's just beeps that come through the device. So it's more in-cab um, you know, beeps that would alert them, but that doesn't often tell you what you're doing, especially if you're doing multiple things wrong at the same time. For instance, you're speeding and you're going around an exit ramp very fast. We call that hot harsh cornering. You could be having multiple series of beeps going off. And again, you know, sometimes that can be confusing to the driver. So having the go talk just eliminates all of that, lets them know exactly what they're doing in your words, and it can relate exactly to your policy. Okay, yeah, very cool, because I saw that, sorry, Fleet Equipment Reader, spoiler yeah. alert, I wrote that in a story <laughs> like yesterday, and I was like, holy smokes, this thing talks to you now. So uh, that's really cool that you can kind of program it, and um, like, what's it sound like? Um, it sounds like an automated voice. Okay. Unfortunately, you don't have the capability like you can on your phones to change the voiceovers. That would be <laughs> awesome if we could, and I'll put that in as a recommendation for future updates. Um, but yeah, it's an automated voice, but it's very clearly spoken. You can understand all the words. Um, you know, we do offer it in multiple languages as well, so um, it's able to be used throughout the globe. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I didn't know if you could also record your, you know, the fleet manager voice yelling at the drivers in the cab. Probably not the greatest social application, but I, no, I saw that. That was very cool. Yeah. Um, okay, great. I think that's a lot of um, a lot of great information. Anything else, just e even in terms in the way of integration that fleet should be aware of, or maybe what's coming down the line to uh, talk about with providers, OEM suppliers, to make sure that what they're doing will be able to to integrate. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, we continue to work with all manufacturers. Um, you know, we have all kinds of industries that use our technology, so it's not just the heavy truck market, also the light duty segment. Um, I think also, as we're talking about integrations, um, there's been a lot of work, of course, done by Geotab with payroll systems and routing systems and, and the gamut of what fleets typically, typically use on a day-to-day -day basis. But one of the newer um, areas that I think really needs to have some consideration among fleets is around electric vehicles, electric trucks that are coming, and electric infrastructure. It's an area that we're really staying uh, keenly focused on. We have an entire team that is just dedicated to electric vehicles and how we can integrate with, with uh, infrastructures and even the utility companies. So that's one, too, that I think every fleet needs to keep top of mind because as we continue to move forward into the future, electric vehicles, electric trucks are really going to be the new norm. Yeah, for sure. And uh, actually, uh, Matt Stevens was my first guinea pig for this series. <laughs> so I will link his video below here so that uh, for viewers, they can get more info there. Well, great. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll uh, talk with you soon. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much.